I don't know, I've had this in me for a couple of days of, of, of the communion and then didn't really have a lot of direction to go with it and felt like this afternoon the Lord just really impressed upon me, remember me. Remember me. Now I'm going to read from the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians and uh, probably familiar to, to most of you. I'm not going to read all that's usually traditionally done uh, when communion is served. I want to read the part that the Lord has emphasized to me today. Beginning with verse 23, Paul doing the writing says, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. And that's really the the area that I want to... uh, uh, just draw the emphasis on and approach this. I don't know if if you've thought about it from, from this perspective, what Jesus is actually doing. This is the Passover supper that they're eating. The Passover that one of the festivals that God ordained uh, when uh, the nation of Israel was delivered from Egypt. Uh, God set that date apart to be remembered annually by the Israelites. And the Passover was just simply saying that the death angel passed over those who had the blood applied to the doorpost and lentil. And so every time, every year that they took the Passover, it was to put them in remembrance of what God had done for the nation of Israel. Then when Jesus comes along, as God had ordained in the fullness of time, to actually fulfill the Passover and to be the lamb that the Passover was pointing to by shedding his blood, and that blood being applied to where death, the separation from the presence of God, would no longer have effect on those who accepted the blood of Jesus Christ, accepting Jesus as a personal Savior. So every year afterwards, they were to celebrate the Passover. They were to think of Jesus. The festival was about Jesus. And it's so easy for us to get in a rut of tradition and just doing things for the sake of doing things. Uh, Just like with the Israelites, you know, Passover meant something that night. You killed that lamb and you applied that blood to stay alive. And then to see the great deliverance that God brought about Not only did he spare their lives, but he delivered them from the bondage, from the captivity that they had been in for over 400 years. He set the captives free. You understand? Here again, pointing to what Jesus would do when his blood's applied to an individual, setting the captives free. But as time goes along, you're just celebrating the holidays. You understand the seven festivals of Israel were national holidays. God ordained them. It's not like the holidays we celebrate today where men have ordained, but these were God-ordained festivals, and every one of these festivals was to put the attention 
on the Lord, what the Lord had done. And so when you get to Paul's time, Paul stating what Jesus stated that night, you understand that was Passover. Jesus was crucified on Passover. The lamb was slain. The blood was shed. And so he says, and Paul saying this, he said, now when you do this, <coughs> excuse me, he said, do this in remembrance of me or in remembrance of Jesus, all right? Isn't it interesting that when he's writing to this church at Corinth, they've already lost sight of what this is all about. See, originally, Passover was a meal, a full-fledged meal. They killed the lamb. They were to eat all of it, not to leave anything. You understand? By the time that in Paul's day, writing to the Corinthians, they had just made this a love feast, if you will. Just a time to get together and uh, uh, let's enjoy this, this meal, you know, forgetting what Passover was all about. And yet Jesus had said to his apostles, do this in remembrance of me. As often as as you do this, as often as you partake of Passover, as often as you celebrate Passover, remember what Passover is about. It's no longer an old covenant thing. This is a new covenant thing. This is the New Testament that's in my blood, sealed with my blood. The Old Testament was sealed with animal blood. The New Testament sealed with the blood of Jesus. So when you partake of the Passover, Remember me. Remember what I've done for you. Remember that I've become sin so you could become righteous. Remember that I've set you free. Remember that I've given you eternal life. Keep this in the foremost of your thinking. Think about me. That, that's really what we're saying. When we say remember something, we're saying just set your mind on to think about it. Recall. You understand? So Jesus is saying, I want you to think about me. So I want you to think about Jesus as we partake of communion tonight. I want you to think about Jesus. This is not a, a, an ordinance of the church. This is not a ritual. I believe we do what we do in obedience to God. Now understand, we're not here for a full-fledged meal. What had happened in Paul's day it had gotten so out of hand that some were eating big meals while other people were doing without. And some were getting drunk. Isn't that amazing? How you can celebrate, supposedly, celebrate something of God and make debauchery out of it. You understand that where you just reduce the, what should be a spiritual thing to something that's focused on you. It's a feel-good thing. And so often that's what religion has done. It's, it's, it's reduced the spiritual things to a me feel good. I want to feel good. Let me do that. Get me on an emotional high. Feed me. You know, fill me up. I don't care about anybody else. And that, that's way off base from what this is all about. We ought to care about others. Jesus cared enough for us that he became the sacrificial lamb. So he's saying, think about me. I want you to think about what I have done. Think about what I'm doing. Think about what I'm going to do. When you partake of the Passover, the new covenant, not only are you remembering the Lord's death, what he has done, but he says you do this until I come, until I come. So you remember what God has done for you, and then you think about what God's going to do for you through eternal life of living forever with the Lord Jesus Christ. 
It's not just what he has done, but God's still doing. God's still working. You understand? God's still supplying our needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. And we have the assurance of a life that's beyond our imagination. A life with the Lord. A life where there's no sin. A life to where righteousness rules. Hard, hard to comprehend that, isn't it? When, when we've been subjected all our lives, we've been subjected to sin and perversity all, all around us. Imagine living in an environment where none of that exists. No temptations. It's not there. Sure, and I, after we ate lunch today, we were walking out of this place, and this lady walked, uh, uh, walked in behind us, whom we had known for many years. And uh, uh, I had uh, actually taught some Bible studies she'd been in and things of this nature. And, and so, you know, I said, hey, how are you doing? And, you know, the usual, you know, find all this. And then she said, what does this mean? When the Lord said in the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation. Well, I've never been asked that question before. Have you? So I just quickly responded, you tell me. <laughs> and her response was, I don't know. But in the split second time, the Spirit quickened me about Jesus after he was baptized, water baptized, the Spirit of God came on him that the Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Have you ever thought about that? And yet Jesus was teaching us, he says, now when you pray, pray in this manner. Our Father who is in heaven hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth or on earth as it is in heaven. On earth. <laughs> Give us today our daily bread. Give me what I need today. And forgive me my trespasses as I forgive others their trespasses. Then he says, and leave me not in to temptation, but deliver me from evil, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And I came back this afternoon, and I, I'm just pondering on that the question the, the lady asked me, and pondering on what uh, I felt like the Spirit had really brought up on the inside of me. And then I got to thinking about, uh, it leads me in the paths of righteousness, Psalm 23. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. So I started praying what he said. I said, Lord, lead me not into temptation, but lead me in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. That's what he wants to do. But in order to do that, the mind has to be stayed on the Lord. Think about me. Remember me. Remember me. All the time. Remember me. And especially when you're doing these things of, of this caliper, such as celebrating a major uh, festival, a major event. Think about me. Don't think about the holiday. Which is interesting at this time of year. What's people think about? The holiday. Time off from work, paid time off from work. You understand? And basically, the holiday is focused on, on the people, not on the Lord. We call it Christ, Christmas, Christ. But it's interesting that we fail to remember Christ. Christ. 
That's exactly what was going on with the Passover. It had been reduced to a holiday. And the very one that they should have been celebrating, they weren't thinking about. Thinking about themselves. Do you understand? Communion is to think about the Lord. Actually, the word itself, if you look at it, it's, it's dealing with, with, with a partnership, a sharing. You understand? And so we're, we're, to, we're to think about the, the partnership that we have with the Lord Jesus Christ, what he has shared with us, what we should share with him. He shared his life with us. We should share our lives with him, right? And that this life is really, uh, should be a, a time of anticipation of the Lord coming. I know when I was growing up as a kid, I, I heard it all the time. The Lord could come any, any moment. The Lord could come tonight. I can't tell you the number of times I've heard that statement made. You don't hear much about that in church anymore, do you? And people are losing sight of what things are all about. Communion has been put in the church manuals as an ordinance of the church. Water baptism, an ordinance of the church. And yet we lose sight of what they actually mean, what they actually represent, what it's all about. The Lord wants us to think about Him. The Lord wants us to remember Him. You know, we're getting ready to enter into a new year. And people do their stuff with resolutions, which, you know, basically just lies. They say they're going to do it and they don't carry through with it, you know. And I don't want us to be that way. I, I, I am looking for commitment. I'm looking for, for people to commit themselves to the Lord. It's a rare thing. It's hard to find people that will actually give themselves to the Lord. They'd rather date him than marry him. You understand? They like to be identified with him, but they don't want to be committed to him. They don't want the responsibility. They don't want the obligations that go with all that. And so when I think about communion, I'm thinking about, you look at what he committed himself to. But I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but the Lord is committed to you. As long as you're alive, he commits himself to you. You have to reject what he's wanting to do because he doesn't withdraw. You're the one that has to make that if you don't want it. If you have to make that much if you don't want him. He's so faithful to us. He's so committed to us. And yet he, Jesus himself says, when I come again, will I find faith on earth? Well, I find people who are actually committed to me. Well, I find people who actually believe the word more than they believe anything else. You, you understand that's what faith's all about. You believe the word more than you believe circumstances. You believe what others don't see. You're not seeing it with your natural eye, but you're getting it on the inside. And the Spirit of God on the inside of you is more real than the things on the outside of you. So Lord, I believe in you. And you start thinking about the Lord. You remember the Lord. That's what I want us to do this evening. I want us to remember the Lord. First off, remember his death and all that that accomplished, all the surroundings of that, all the horrible things that he suffered, not for himself, but for us. Remember that. But then don't stay there. Remember what he's done. 
Do you remember when you were saved, when you were born again? I'm not asking you for a date or a place or an hour. Do you remember when a change, a, a dramatic change took place inside you? The Lord came. You understand that? The Lord came to live in you. And he's going to be there till he comes for you. Now he's living in our hearts by faith. Right? And the spirit of God resides on the inside of us if we've received him. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. And then we have this hope. You can read about it in 15th chapter 1 Corinthians, also the 4th chapter of 1 Thessalonians. That the Lord's coming again. The mortal bodies are going to be changed into immortal. Corruptible is going to be turned into incorruptible for the believer. And according to 1 Thessalonians 4, we're going to meet the Lord in the air. We're going to meet Him in the air. You understand? We have a divine appointment. Have you forgotten about it? So then the communion should be a time that we think about this divine appointment that we have with the Lord. And, and it's like I can hardly wait until the mortal takes on immortality to this corruptible, decaying body puts off the corruption, the decaying and we get this glorified, incorruptible, non-decaying body to live in the presence of the Lord forever. And I think about, you know, I read the New Jerusalem and it says there's no sun, no moon. They're not needed. Because the sun, the S-O-N, is so brilliant that the city is illuminated. You understand? Can you imagine the countenance of the Lord? See, Moses had a little insight into it because just spending 40 days and 40 nights in the presence of God has such an effect on his physical body that he had to cover his face to talk to the people when he came off of the mount. And all he's doing is reflecting glory. Moses didn't it? Think about about living in that glory. You see, I believe if we live in the presence of the Lord now, we can reflect the glory. And I'm not talking about wearing a veil over your face. I'm talking about being so, so full of the Lord and your mind so set on the Lord that people around you will take notice that you've been with Jesus. You understand? Your mind's on Him. So what's Jesus saying? Think about me. Remember me. I'm coming. Live for me so I can come and get you. He who endures to the end, say, not he who starts the race wins. You have to finish the race. You understand? And so this is a time of committing ourselves to the Lord. You made the body, now what do you want to do with the body? You put me here in this geographical location. You gave me the gifts and the abilities that I have. Now what is it that you're wanting to do with this body, with these gifts, with these abilities? I give them to you. I give them to you. I'm going to think about you. Not about me. I'm going to think about what you want to do with this with an anticipation of you coming back, gathering me up, and me hearing, well done, well done. You understand? So in the Lord's words, he says, remember me. And that's what I want us to do right now, is remember the Lord. You know, <clears throat> He talks about, if you, if you look at like the 26th chapter of Matthew, where he's, he's eating this last meal, the Passover meal, with his disciples. He said, I've desired this one. I've desired this one. 
And he says, I'm not going to drink the fruit of the vine anymore. In other words, I've eaten this meal with you. I've drunk this, this with you. I'm not going to do it anymore until I drink it anew in the kingdom. So we have an appointment. Just think, just sitting down and sharing the meal, if you will, with the Lord. Eating with Him, drinking with Him. See, we have the opportunity to do that every time we come together. Problem is, we're not thinking about Him. We're not remembering Him. We forget why we assemble ourselves together. We just go through the motions of going to church. Well, that's what you're supposed to do. No, it should be what you desire to do. To be with Him. Remember Him. To think about Him. You know, sometimes just... Uh, I mean, I've just been going through the day sometimes and just decide to have communion with the Lord and I'll just pull out some wafers and some juice. Just the Lord and me. Uh, thinking about the Lord. He didn't say how often. He said as often as you do it. As often as you do it. Well, I can think about the Passover lamb anytime I want to. Thank God he hasn't given me a set date that I have to do this. And you can do it at home. It, it doesn't have to be an assembly. It can be personal. I can't tell you the number of times that mom would just be around the house and just decide to take communion. I mean, that was regular. Because she talked to the Lord every day. You understand? And thank God some of that's rubbed off. <laughs> uh, that you remember him. We think about him. We set our minds on him. He's coming. Am I looking for it? See, here's a, here's a passage that a lot of people overlook in the Bible. It says he's coming for those who are looking for him. You ever read it? He's coming for those who are looking for him. Are you looking? This is just saying the Lord's died, but he's coming back. So I'm anticipating the coming of the Lord again, not just in, in spirit, but in the reality of meeting him in the air. To be with him forever. Amen. So we're going to celebrate Jesus tonight. What he's done, what he's doing, and what he's going to do. Amen? Amen. Father, I thank you that you bless us indeed. You enlarge our territory. Your hand's with us to keep us from evil so that we do not cause pain. And I thank you for blessing us and keeping us and for making your face to shine upon us and being gracious unto us. You lift up your countenance upon us and you give us peace. So, Lord, we're glad to invite you to rise up. Let your enemies be scattered and let those who hate you flee before you. Amen. Amen. Amen.